Hello, my name is John Lorgan. I'm with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I am with Campus Renovation Services, which is a subgroup of facility planning and management. I am uh, the CAD manager of the CAD group, UW campus. A little bit, of, no, no, it's fine. Um, my name, I've had 10 years experience at the UW-Madison. I'm part of, uh, like I said, Campus Renovation Services. Today we're going to be talking about 3D scanning and how we utilize it for our remodel construction projects on campus. We have, in our department, we have architects, engineers, interior designers, electrical designers within our department who handle about 260 plus projects a year, internal construction, where we have our own trades of carpenters, electricians, uh, plumbers, steam fitters, um, just about everything you can imagine. So a little bit about campus. We have um, 939 acres. We have about 304 buildings on campus proper. Of that, we have uh, 22 and a half million square feet where we do a core set of buildings of 154 buildings. So we're going to be talking about our 3D scanning. Um, this is a key number for coming up. I'm going to be talking about 740. So I'll talk about that number in a little bit here, uh, about why we have switched to 3D scanning um, and why that's an important number that I feel for the future of what we do. All right, a little bit about my, how we do things. We used to always use students, and this is a picture of our former students. And our students, they do used to do our as-built um, existing additions, all of our uh, electrical, plumbing, everything, uh, architecture on can, uh, for us. They would go and as-built things, but always miss things. They'd miss an outlet or a data jack or a cabinet or things in the mechanical system. The mechanical systems, the plumbing systems, the electrical systems, things get constantly missed. A little bit about the two students I have highlighted over on the side. Emma Hung is one of our uh, interior students that graduated. She'll be uh, pretty proud of her. She'll be a, a speaker at Autodesk University this fall. Amanda is, I don't give Amanda enough credit, she is actually one of our students who we retained after she graduated to help build our master models in 2014, 2015. She did the core about about 130 plus master models for us in architecture bringing them up to a level 200. We developed a process starting in late 2013 2014. We trained Amanda and we got uh, a majority of the master models done. So if it wasn't for Amanda we wouldn't be where we are today with uh, doing Revit uh, construction and model plans. All right, so a lot of our existing conditions used to look like spaces like this. I mean, it, it's really hard to see everything. You're going to miss a cup sink, the outlets, and, every, and the gas cocks in the side there. It's really easy when you have a congested space with um, lab researchers in the lab at the same time. So it's really difficult. So it was really, I felt, an important thing to go to a 3D scanner when we had the opportunity. It's easy to miss things. And it's easy to bump into things you don't want to, like the um, needle at the edge of the counter, or you don't want to bump into some active uh, spaces that you don't know what kind of uh, experiments you're doing. And then lastly, it, for as building the way we used to do things, it's some things right in front of your face you're going to miss. That was a... Uh, a uh, emergency strobe that we missed in a site visit a couple years back. It was right in front of the uh, when they were uh, looking around at the different systems and our Revit models. So on campus, like I was mentioning, we have 154 master models set up. They're highlighted in green there. The rest is um, between athletics and housing, um, we do not do a lot of whole projects there. As those are usually well over the $185,000 cap. So we focus on the core buildings that we have on campus that we know we do remodel projects, and those are the highlighted. So the, the other ones, we do several projects. We'll have multiple projects and multiple floors in these buildings on campus. And these, this was, uh, again, for, um, Amanda did a majority of these for us, and I have to give her credit. So in 2013, like I was mentioning before, it was uh, Amy Zabel Peets, my supervisor, who put her foot down and said, we're going to Revit, and let's get a plan. And we started with a, this plan here, and we started highlighting as we going things.
So this is basically how we do construction um, projects. We have an architectural master model, a mechanical master model, and a CD construction set. So we'll actually do, using phases within Revit, we'll actually do the phasing, and we'll actually do the architectural phasing, we'll do a me mechanical phasing and link them together. We'll do the construction set with phasing together, and it's a seamless process. It actually, we have now perfected what we do very well, and this works really, really well for us. And if it wasn't for this process that you see right here, we wouldn't be where we are today because it, it's literally impossible otherwise for the amount of projects in these, keeping these models live. All of our master models are live models, so we constantly update. So 3D scanning. There are multiple 3D scanners on the market to choose from. You have the Ferrell that we have right behind me. We have the uh, Leica down below, uh, BLK360. You have that Apple one. It's great for little spaces and little rooms, but otherwise, yeah, for our purposes, it's absolutely no. And the latest one, that one on the pole, that is a new one that does live data as you're walking down the hallways in, in buildings. I'm excited to see it. It's the, uh, uh, one of the vendors here, he, um, Akita Box, has a couple of these, and next week they're going to stop by my office and show it off to me to see it. So I'm really excited, and there's so many different options. You can't go wrong. The price point, unfortunately, you know, the, what we have, the Feral 3, 330, is about a $50,000 machine. Now the brand new one you see in the upper left corner, that feral scanner will actually do pull processing as you're tied to the scanner to your laptop it'll actually process as you're scanning so you're actually there's no waiting so it's all done by the time you get back to your office with that uh with the scanners after your project's over now we don't have that one we just we just post process when we get back and there's a night and day difference in the software from from even two years ago three years ago the post processing is so much better i don't have to use targets and and that to tie everything up. Most of the software will we'll figure it out and tie it together seamlessly. We use um, a couple of different options depending on the scenario, but um, these these scanners are I feel is extreme value for any kind of uh, department that uses for remodeling purposes within uh, their facilities. I feel it's a, a benefit to the taxpayers that you're not wasting so much time. Okay, a little bit about our gear. I have a Ferro 330 behind me. I typically use either Ferro Scene or use Recap uh, for pipe and duct work. I'll um, occasionally use Point Scene, depending if I have a clean um, clean scan, that I can um, have the pipe runs and the duct runs work perfectly together. We use uh, a majority of my work. I'll actually just use Recap, and we'll um, take the Recap files, place it in the Revit as a reference. We'll reference it into the space and have uh, the students update the models based on that using both Recap and Revit. Okay, the process flow is pretty easy. I get a project. Once they've gone out, uh, the architects and engineers have gone out to a site, they will go out and take photos and get cost estimating, just rough estimating for the project. I'll work with the uh, design team on what level of detail, where they want for their scope of the scan. Um, they'll typically give me a plan. I'll look at the photos that they've taken from when they were doing their estimating. I'll uh, base my scans. I'll do a general plan layout of all the scanning locations I want to do my, basically my scan shots from above and below um, the ceiling system so I can pick up the mechanical a great deal. I'll schedule time for going out to scan the room. Uh, I'll perform the on-site uh, scanning of the room, you know, probably one to four hours, depending on the project. I've never had one more than run more than six hours on site between the uh, upper and lower half of the ceiling systems. I'll return, do the post processing, upload it in the Revit, and on way. One of the key things to the scanner is making sure this thing's level. This thing's rather fussy, and I have to make sure it's level, so I'm always checking to make sure it's level. Well, that's the one thing I don't like about this scanner and it's one thing to be aware of when you're doing these that sometimes they can be rather fussy. This actually can be GPS or um, coordinate correct off satellites so I can actually hit this thing on a satellite system so I have my um, northing easting and my elevation setting to my local coordinate system perfectly. I don't do that because it, uh, it drives me nuts.
So, so far this year, we've scanned 71 projects. The average one is between 2.4 and 4.2 gig uh, each data set for each building. It's not too bad for when you're talking, you know, one, 2,000 square foot spaces. Um, it works out pretty, it's a lot, it's a very data intense, but there's a trade off. I do one site visit, we don't have to do other ones. Okay, so in 2014, I uh, was proposed, we had a project that we we're going to do 6,000 square foot. We're going to be moving from one group from one building for uh, and having to set up a lab in another building uh, as they remodeled that building for um, uh, adding an addition. So we had to renovate this space in a rather timely manner, and so we're looking at a certain level of detail. So we hired a scanning service, and this was our first pilot project. The uh, scanning service did 71 shots for the day, which took probably about 12 hours of actual scan time for the level of detail and the areas that we were trying to reach around the space. So here's an illustration of all the shots that he did throughout the day. It was uh, rather exhausting. Now today's standards, I would probably lower it down about six hours because of the level of detail I'd change it to after learning what we do and how things work. So here's a nice illustration of all the shots in the room with a nice high imagery of that space. So when you actually look back and you're looking at the scans, you can see all the different points throughout the area of the, uh, all the way we set up the, the scanners. It works out really, really well for what we do. And there's not missing anything. So like I mentioned before, this is one of those sheets that I uh, set up and I get a, the project. And I'll go out and I'll actually set up and I'll plan out all my shots throughout the space. And how we used to do things a couple of years ago, very short time, we used to actually set up the targets in the room. So I'd actually have control points draw out my shots um, of my scanning. Today, not needed. The, the software today automatically knows and recognizes where to merge the scan points together. It is a total game changer. I save so much time on not having to set up control points and having to go out and re-establish, um, set up all my targets and then have them take them down. I used to use a little ball sphere besides these targets right here in front of me. It's, it has been a night and day difference. The software has come a long way in a very short time. Okay, this is one of my latest projects this spring um, that we had where I did the mechanical systems in, in a pretty good timely manner. So it was probably about three hours. So here's a scan image of it in 3D of, uh, after I post-process it and, and recap. So you can kind of see what the imagery looks like outside the shell. And then here's the plan with the 3D scan and then another photo of above the ceiling mechanical systems. And I learned I learned to look at the mechanical plans to see where is the good access point. Like these kind of tiles, I do not like. I break these really easily. You know, these two by sixes, these are two by sixes, and they break really easily. The two by, I've actually had somewhere the two by eights, and it's like you're wobbling it, and it's like, ah, oh, and, they, and they, they'll crack really easily. The, the two by twos are really nice, and that's what three quarters of campus is. But um, to figure out the right access points in a room to do my shots, and not I don't have to open up the whole ceiling. It's just enough to let enough light in and do additional shots. So I've learned to do a below and above the ceiling systems. So I'll do a transition. So right at the line, I'll do a shot to be able to transition my my uh, scans together, and it works really well. I mean, I can zip along with this very fast. Um, and then I, once I've done it, I have my students just go and update the master models. And it's pretty darn easily done. I mean, it's, it's just that easy. This is almost done. I was gonna show you how high it actually goes. So um, we, I rubber sheet the uh, scans in. The students have been trained how to update the master models. Um, based off the scans, they'll, they can, they'll understand what's a, aligned and unlined if it's, a, if it's got insulation on the outside. They'll have to look at the uh, as built to see what it should be and they'll just kind of ballpark it. They're using the scans at that point as a center line alignment for the, for the uh, utilities. So it works out really well. And then we get, a, we get an existing condition. So this, the reason I'm showing this one what, is that one of our engineers, Mike, he went and verified this. 
after I said it's all done, he, Mike went out there and he comes back and he goes, I just spent four hours over there looking at this and everything's right. I'm like, what's your problem? He's like going freaking out. He's like, I don't understand. This is all perfect. I don't get this. What's going on? Well, it's, it was 3D scanned. And he goes, ugh. And so I walked over his computer, turned on the scan image, and he goes, you're doing all my scan, you're doing all my projects and scanning from now on. Period. So he was like all giddy about it. He goes, there's no mistakes. There's no, there's no missing anything. And, he, and if he's taken a judgment, now he can look at the recap file along with the, with the Revit file, and he can look at it and go, yep, it's perfect. You know, and there's no missing. No more missing. I'm tired of being complained about, about missing stuff. And, and time-wise, this would be for students to go as built this, this would be four days to go measure this out and get this perfect. To go out and do this, I do this in four hours. I upload it. It takes them, you know, initially when they're first on, do, on board doing this, it might take them a week to update. But we're talking a week just, you know, in the office. There's no going out in the field and come back, measuring. And doing. It's one visit, one visit. So we cut down our time by weeks, by heavily. And then we, and this is what it looks like when it's all done. This project was pretty simple. They just added a couple walls in, so they just need some transfer grills and redress some of the supply grills. So it was, and then some sprinkler heads. This sprinkler heads didn't really show up in this really well, but but it, it works. It's an outstanding tool. If you're doing internal construction remodeling or you want to save, you know, you can justify if you're sending out house construction remodel projects. You want to save your taxpayers' money? I feel that this has been totally worth my time. You know, I, I've I've really been happy that we have been really blessed to have one of these things. So, in a typical room, uh, color scan, raw files are 2.2 gig. Uh, once I process everything, it's 4.2. It winds up being 12, uh, 33 mega square foot. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points, but there's no missing. That's the big thing about this. So, um, and I had a special project last year to go, uh, when our, some of our infrastructure they were worried about, some of our statues might getting damaged during the end of the summer. So I went out and scanned it. And you, you could see the, 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 the detail here. That is a sub-millimeter. Those, each one of the shots around it, those are 32 minutes a piece to sit there and pick up some millimeter. I was shooting down the hill from this location, down the hill, down to um, across our library mall, a thousand feet away, and I was picking up stuff. I could see the sign 7-Eleven on the store, a thousand feet away. And I'm going, how in the world is this? I was very, I'm very impressed with this. So with that said, I'll show you guys really quick. Still not. Oh, I'm running a high-end scan. So what you guys are going to get is a see is a very very high-end scan of this. So, with that said, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit. Flip it over. There we go. I was going to surprise you and actually show you the scan finished, but. So this is actually something I did the other day in the room here. So you can see the level of detail. This is with my um, high resolution camera on and there's no missing anything. It's pretty darn good in this room. So I came in here Monday, after, Monday night and scanned this in high definition color. Is it necessary for what we do? No. It's, at, you know, I bought this scanner because I didn't want to miss anything for certain scans. Um, yeah, I want to do that, but for most of the time, I don't really need to do that. This is really hard to do with a laptop. So, I, I can, I can barely pick up the numbers on this. So, here we go. But you can see that the electrician who installed that, you can see how rough he was on the, on the screws there. So it's too bad that I, I didn't do another shot over here because just it's just at the wrong angle for this. But I'll flip over to the other scan really quick. 
and this this has been as like I said a serious game changer for us on time wise when I said that 740 hours that was 740 hours so if I save Mike from three additional site visits in a year for one project he goes and saves three of those and we multiple by 260 projects that winds up being all of our staff saving around 740 hours a year on time they don't even realize it they just you know it's more time to sit over the cubicle and talk to another person let's just be honest it, it's 52 hours a person and that winds up if you actually bill out rate I estimate that at fifty nine thousand dollars in taxpayer savings just by additional site visit not needed just by that alone so and we cut down on our time we I'm hoping that we'll start seeing our numbers come up in the next year because we'll be able to be more productive so I'm really I'm really focusing on this uh, we've we've gone from two years ago to doing 10 percent scans last year we're at 40 this year we're at 90 percent I cannot say I'm going to do 100%. I just can't be every place and, and all the time. It's not logistically possible. So, oh, there we go. That's up. I'll flip this open here. So, and this is the black and white version of it. And this is typically what I do. And it's good enough. It measures out. I can measure everything just fine like any other uh, space. So, like, I, like I was talking earlier, this little image here, you can see, I walked around the room and I scoped out everything that I needed to. And so I could see, oh, come on, come on, there we go. I can now see that data jack and that outlet over there. I can see that outlet there. So there's no missing anything. So we're, we're right on track. And I'll show you this really quick now this is done. So this thing was only 400 bucks. This is a great tool. I absolutely love having this. So on a regular 10 foot, eight, nine, 10 foot ceiling, I'm now above the ceiling system real easily. And I control it with my cell phone. Is this the scan you just did? No. Oh. I, um, this one won't do post processing as I'm scanning. So I did this. This stuff was done earlier on Monday afternoon. But the brand new ones I was showing earlier, the brand new version of this, does processing as it's scanning. So we'll actually sit there and hook onto my laptop and do post processing as I'm sitting here. So there's no more going back to the office and and go ch -ch -ch -ch, waiting and waiting and waiting. The new software versus like two years ago, it'd be like half a day to go and sit and scan, do this. Now I can do it in like an hour. So really quick, I'm all done here. I'll ask if you have any questions. I was just gonna say, John, is the scan itself, isn't it measurable as well? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the key thing. This is all, I mean, it's hard to do with the laptop here. It's a real pain in the neck. But I can sit and pull points. I can sit and measure stuff. So I can just pick that, come down, and I'm measuring out. I didn't convert this to, uh, it always comes in as metric because it's from, this is a German machine, so it always comes in, and I have not, I have not bothered. I always like it done in metric, and then I convert these back to English. But it's, you can measure out everything in the room real easily. So I can pick here, come down, and then I can sit and pick the, pick the spot, and it's, going to see it's that many meters there but if I actually pick here and I come down you can see alignments and I pull it back into place it's going to tell me it's 3.5 meters so it's totally measurable this is like you know you you could pull measurements all day long with this but because we actually put this in our Revit master models it's like there's no measuring it's just click 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 it's in place click this in the place drop this outlet drop that data drag drop those light switches and it's done and it's done and there's no dilly dally i'll cut sections and make sure the students dropped in everything the way i want around the room as long as it's line of sight this is a line of sight machine so there's no i can't see behind um i can't magically see over here at these these windows i have to open the curtains so when i flip over here 
Oh, let's go. Come on, come on. So the curtains are closed and the curtains are open. So I can pick out the frame pretty easily. So you learn how to do and run one of these, and I run this a lot. I mean, right now I'm doing it four or five times a week. You know, in some spot, most of our simple projects, I can get an hour in an hour. The hardest part is finding a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, go ahead. What's it? What is involved in the I pull my raw files in and I combine them all together and they self-stitch. I, I trust the automation of uh, Recap. It self-stitches without a problem. I have not had a... Know what's electrical and no. Post-process, when I'm talking that, it's actually taking all my different shots and putting it together and it'll just find, it's just points and, and different variations of those points in coloration. So it'll only pick up that. And I have to have a student go manually good. Now, the point scene will do a little better. It'll help me figure things out. It's not perfect. And like I was talking about the duct work and the pipes, it's not perfect yet. It's getting there. So can I, can I, will it get better? It'll get better with time. So, so go ahead. Recap this as four individual scenes stitched together, and see that as one. They are, they, all four of these are stitched together as okay. one. Okay. This is, but, but I have the raw files, so these are actually could be considered as raw files. So if I have like one of these points and I want to tie it outside, so if I have the door open and I look outside, I can, okay, I'm going to do a scan later, I can come back and tie that together. So then now I have a whole series of scans. Because I want to, you know, I might do some work here and I might do it on the hallway and have to do it on the ceiling, so I have to chase at the ground level and then I'll actually re, re establish above the ceiling system. And then I chase down the hallway and the ceiling system. So I might actually go ground just for a point. And I might do it at different time periods. So, like today, I might do this part and tomorrow I might do that part if I run out of time. So, it's all about timing. <laughs> so, no. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, is it export LAS or just XYZ format? Um, XYZ. Yep. Yeah. And this machine will actually do, I can make it satellite coordinate correct. Oh. So I can turn on my satellite, it'll find satellites and it'll be perfect. It'll actually be, it'll be perfect to our coordinate system in our area and it set my elevation. It drives me nuts. I turn it off because it drives me nuts because I'm like at 900 feet and all of our scans that are, you know, all of our buildings that are, are at zero plus. We don't actually have a Revit master model at true elevations. We have not bothered to do that. We, we chose that early on not to do that because it can be cumbersome. So it's been problematic that way. So, all right. That's just a Revit family. Yep, just that's just our Revit families from our Revit, uh, from our Revit families. We 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 literally that's a whole another discussion how we do our construction. So when I when I was showing this earlier, yep, yep, it's it's. Oh, let's go to this one. This if you take away anything on how we do Revit, this is the one thing that you can take away how we do things. We stitch everything together in references and it works really well. Revit works that really well. And, and, and we use phases for our constructions and yeah, we've had really good luck. So, yep. okay.